Siberia, ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must treat carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia. I, Gufre the Hairy, am in pain. My best friend, dear Yusuf, has died. I am glad I got to see him shortly before his death, though. It truly was a gift from God. If that were not enough, my second daughter, Maria, she suffers greatly from consumption and treatment, was unfortunately unsuccessful. I pray for relief, but I don't know if it will happen in any case. What will the next chapter of my life be? What will it hold? Hopefully more progress than pain. Hello everybody, this is Havoc, and welcome back to our Crusader Kings 3 role-playing episode as Count, or excuse me, Duke Gifre de Barcelona, or soon to be Barcelona, as we are going to find out. While this is a rather somber time, I... As Duke, I have to try and manage the pain, but also take care of my realm. One of the best ways that you can take care of the realm is by giving the video a thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and of course, turning on those bell notifications and your comments. Your comments have been immensely helpful. I say that every time because I mean it every time. But also, if you want to go a step beyond and support the channel financially, which is never required, but always appreciated, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member, which I'm still figuring out how to integrate that into this game. I'm going to have to consult one Surreal Beliefs to see how it's possible. But also, you can visit the Dogs of War Outpost, also known as my Nexus Game Store, where you can purchase several games from varying genres, and I get a small commission from. Again, never ever required, but always, always, always immensely appreciated. With that out of the way, let's see what the next part in the story of Duke Gifre, just what it holds. In the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering, I still have to remember that I am a Duke and I am in control of lands, of people, of courtiers and vassals of family members, my wife and my children. And as much as I would love to just sit and cry and moan and groan over the deaths, over the health of my child, I have to push on. And this is where I'm thankful for my courtiers, for my vassals, for my counselors. Because they've given such excellent advice. You who are reading this, who are watching this, have given such excellent advice. I think it's time to move the capital to Barcelona. We will have a, a small harbor there soon. We will be able to start filling out Barcelona. I will still control Urgell, of course, and it will always be my homeland. But perhaps moving soon enough will make Barcelona the home of my children and potentially my grandchildren. And with that switch, it does bring me uh, just a little more income, a little bit more supply and some levies. Urgell, you will always be remembered. No worries there. Now, unfortunately... There is a current peasant rabble faction occurring in Barcelona that will hit in 37 months. These people are not happy. But my hope is that if I were to come over here and start increasing the development of Barcelona, we already control all of it. That hopefully, by making this the capital and developing it, we will be able to uh, pursue a peace which might even potentially knock out the peasant rabble altogether. Another thing, Myron de Barcelona, my chancellor, who is also my brother and my friend, we're going to switch him over to domestic affairs, which will increase my vassal's opinion up to seven and a half. Now, that doesn't seem 
like a lot. But considering all the things, I think Countess Alicinda would benefit very much uh, from such affairs. We also need to worry about Countess Elisinda in general, and I think one of the better ways we can do this is we can offer a guardianship. And who better? You know what? Let's do it. He's an architect. He's an insightful thinker. He is intelligent. Bernat Willem Garcado, my knight. There we go. She will accept, because I am her liege. The Guardian skills across the board. She's intimidated by me as well. That is perfect. So now she will become one of, not my direct Guardian, but she will be under a Guardianship. We've moved our capital to Barcelona. We are working on all of the things. But it has been made known that unknown to me, I have several claims. The County of Mallorca, the County of Menorca, the County of Yerbisa, these three island chains will be a great access to the rest of the potential world. I think it would be a really good idea to take these over. Now, currently, my domain limit is going to be a limiting factor, naturally. But I think it will be good. So, we're going to keep a close eye on things. We are still going after the Wallachia of Tarragona. Simply because we have to have that to secure the Duchy of Barcelona. If we want to found the Kingdom of Aragon, I need to completely own Barcelona, Balancia, and Navarra, Navarra, however you want to say it. And also the Taifa of Saracusta. So we have a ways to go before we can fulfill our, our kingdom goals. And so that will remain there, but we do have some quote-unquote free wars as it were, down here. So on the condition that I'm able to reduce the peasant rabble to nothing should they rebel, or just if they was dissolve, I think it would be best for us uh, to wait until that moment to build up our coffers, to build up our troops, before we decide to go to war with the barony of Madinat Mallorca. And of course, Countess Elisinda has accepted, which is great. She is now Bernat Willem Garcado's ward, and I believe, based on the traits that she has, I believe a stewardship focus would be very beneficial. It appears that my plan worked. A faction targeting you has been disbanded, the peasant rabble. Unfortunately, I don't believe we could actually take him on in the moment. If we went after our claims, ooh, never mind. I believe this would work. It would only cost 29 prestige which is something we have an overabundance i say we pull the trigger now before something too terribly quick happens and we can invite our allies into the war we'll see what happens we will raise our armies ally one ally two fantastic let's head to barcelona while we wait for the rest of our troops to arrive be delighted if your daughter Antha from Count Bernard of Orléans would be visit my court in Orléans. Absolutely. Our troops are on the way to the harbor. And no sooner than that than my bishop, Bishop Guillem Gorda of Barcelona, has proud through the documents, both ancient and of less certain prov uh, providence. Enough material to do the rightful claim of the sheikdom of Tarragona. It only cost us 63 prestige, and I will do it absolutely. Let's move. Do you believe he plans to move there? If not, this may be a short war indeed. Oh, absolutely. We got it. We may not even make it for the battle. Oh, he turned the tide of the battle. What better way? Oh, man, that's awesome. Fantastic. So while mm, it wasn't an incredible victory but we were able to sneak in there and take out everything that we needed to oh 24 knights killed 327 soldiers we lost a lot of levies but we also killed a decent amount as well overall not too shabby i'm thankful we pursued when we did we should be able to lay siege to mariaca 
immediately. It'll take eight months. We'll see what we can do, but also an available perk. Prepared conscription would be great. Reduces army gold maintenance. Friendly territory levy reinforcement rates increase as well. But. But. What is. Ooh. A peacemaker would actually be really nice as well. Absolute control is great because if you have the control at 100, gives us additional bonuses to taxes and levies. Let's just go prepared conscription just to make a little bit of extra dough. With the siege of the county of Majorca guaranteed, we need to take out... Hmm, I wonder if they will go after us or not. When my allies join is the question, and on top of that, let's try it. There we go. I had no doubts whatsoever. Our commander traits are just too great. Our knights are too many. The victory is ours. Let us pursue back. We should be able to catch them again before they're able to get out. And indeed, it looks like a third. Oh, no way. Praise Jesus. My daughter Maria has recovered from her consumption. She looks a bit weak, but perhaps given some time, she'll be able to find her way back into full health. This is fantastic news. I can't be, can't be happier about this, as well as the way the war is going. Oh, this is great news indeed, which might just bring me out of my saddened state. With that victory, it appears we have everything we need. We would gain the contested title, the county of Mariurka, the city of Ancudia, 15 fame amongst everything else. We can't enforce our demands, we will do so. And the war is over. Very short number of months comparatively with most wars. We are good, we can disband. And we can now take a little bit of a breather, knowing that we have indeed conquered Palma. We converted it to our cause. It's been a year and a half since the war has ended. The realm is, is thriving, to be completely honest. We're building another farm in Barcelona. Things are going peaceful. I have lived my life as a duke these last one and a half years in contemplation. Being able to mourn the loss of my friend Yusuf has been much needed, and it helps that a time of peace has ensured that. But now, my daughter, Antha de Barcelona, has come of age. It is finally time to marry her off to see her become truly a woman. With sufficient tutelage, even a child that has displayed little natural inclination towards careful planning has come to truly understand its uses. Now it's harder to say, however. Everything that is taxed of her is done by others before she gets to it. She never tells petty lies the way she used to. Perhaps she was not as clever as she seemed, after all. She's an elusive shadow. She's a massive amount of intrigue, and a huge amount of intrigue lifestyle experience. They do grow up fast, don't they? Now, for one, let's see. It looks like Mayor, uh, Lady Mayor Valencia is still up and running. What is my daughter? Oof. Well, it looks like we have a candidate, at least for uh, my next spy master, and it will indeed be Antha de Barcelona. She is doing swimmingly well. She is also has 17 prowess, so she could definitely fight on her own. Now, the real question is who do we marry off to? Are we allowed to marry into an alliance? Would it do anything for us is the big, big question. But also... Is there a chance for inheritable traits? Do we have someone who would work within the bounds of what we are looking for in a husband? I'm afraid we're going to have to marry for traits with Antha. We want to preserve our matrilineal uh, line be simply because of the genius trait. So if we could marry someone who has something that would complement that or add to her children that would ensure that they would stay in our line that would be ideal if we married for traits and we did a matrilineal marriage again this is 
a little unfortunate, but it looks like Baron Theodirzian, we could potentially use him in the future. He has a decent learning, a decent diplomacy. Perhaps it could be persuaded in many ways to join our court, and that means would be by marrying Antha de Barcelona. They would stay within our court as well. They would have genius and a very high chance of becoming a fecund, which increases fertility and life uh, expectancy would increase as well. Antha would take a little bit of a prestige hit because she is marrying lower, an unlanded fellow. But Baron would, of course, get a lot. And while we are on that subject, I just wanted to check up on my daughter, Maria. She's still not doing fantastic, but hopefully she will recover well enough. The marriage was accepted. Of course it was. I will graciously take the hand of your daughter, Antha, in holy matrimony. May Saint Bridget bless our union. Yes, indeed. Welcome to the family. Do not disappoint me. As a military leader and one who has no issues pursuing the military lifestyle, was studying the tactics of ancient generals, and I was amused to learn about Julius Caesar's exploits during his conquest of Gaul, which in all honesty probably isn't too far away from where we live. During his siege of Alicia, Caesar determined that direct assault on the well-fortified city would be too costly. He instead ordered his army to build his own fortress, which surrounded the entire city, trapping the enemy garrisons inside to starve while simultaneously preventing reinforcements from relieving the defenders. This was an incredibly well thought out and executed tactic that ended up winning Caesar Alicia. He would use this to then exploit the entire regions of Gaul and further the exploits of Rome. A little ingenuity goes a long way. If we make the enemy come to us, we get friendly fatal casualties, get reduced. That is going to be the best solution. That makes sense. Guffrey knows one thing above all else. This is far. Very nice. It seems like yesterday that Antha, our first daughter, had come of age, and now I turn the corner, and Maria has come of age as well. With sufficient tutelage, even a child displayed little natural inclination towards diplomatic influence, can come to truly understand it with an excellent grasp of all manners of etiquette, an understanding of all kinds of entertainment, and the eloquence to go with it. She will have little trouble navigating a life at court. Duchess, Antha's contributions towards Maria's education cannot go unmentioned. Her lessons have given Maria valuable knowledge to her future life. She is a charismatic negotiator. And amongst other things, she would be a very good diplomat. She's also blessed with some fantastic prowess. They do grow up fast, and we need to find her a husband. And finally, after a great, great deal of searching, I think we are going to propose that Musin Ibn, Hisham Umayyad, and Maria de Barcelona get betrothed, since one is a child, that would be good old Musin. He is only two years away from becoming a man, so it's not like it will last forever. She will be 18 on the condition of once of their marriage. Uh, the best parts is that they will have a high chance of gaining the trait genius. Said will allow the Muslim opinion of anyone who is born of this dynasty, which I think will be great. And at least one parent has this trait, so it will get inherited. So I think that's fantastic. On top of that, we gain a sizable alliance. And Maria de Barcelona gains quite a bit of mystique, uh, prestige for going into House Umayyad. Musin, marrying a close relative is, is, is going to work just fine. They will accept this. This is a matrilineal marriage. And I think that's the best thing we could have had for Maria. And of course, I will gladly accept your betrothal. Your daughter Maria will be betrothed to my son Musin two years. And my daughter, my second daughter, will be married. Despite having a time of peace and despite working through several of my emotions surrounding the death of Yusuf, which still haunts me to this day, and even in the rejoicing of my daughter Maria not only being healed from consumption, but also finding a marriage that proved to be successful and could alter the entire course of the Iberian struggle. I still have a mental break. I feel like an imposter. Recently, I feel like I'm not worthy of the Duchy of Barcelona. Do other rulers doubt themselves as, as I doubt myself? 
I try to be a good, just duke, avenging slights and meeting out retribution. But others of my station always seem to deliver vengeance so much swiffer. Damn this universe for raising one so poor as me to such heights. If I become alone as I try to think about this, I will gain reclusive, which will reduce my diplomacy. It will reduce my stewardship. But my stress loss will increase, which is what we need. I would lose 36 stress, which would actually knock me down to a reasonable mental state that I think would be beneficial for me. That's going to be the best solution for me. I'm going to be alone just for a little bit. Never fear, wife, my children, my courtiers, my subjects. I'll come back. There are two things that a father always enjoys seeing in his children's lives. For one, seeing children advance to great stations. My counselor Valencia, Lady Mary Valencia, the Impaler of Cardona, has died. And as such, my spymaster position is open. And while there are certainly other people of a higher calling, Lord Mayor Nuno of Cardona, certainly other vassals who are seeking these positions. And though she is ill, what happened here? I have to assign her. Oh no. How do I... Oh, please child. Please survive. Baron, you need you. Yes, you. You need to take care of your wife. I need my spy master. I need my daughter. Anthony Barcelona, you're only 18. Please survive. But still, she is now a spy master, rising to the greatest station I could ever give her out of my own personal authority. But also, seeing yet another one of my daughters be married off into the wide world to search things on her own, Musin ibn Hasham Umayyad is now old enough to marry my daughter Maria de Barcelona. Again, we will receive some uh, an alliance here. This will be amazingly well for our Iberian struggle. I would gladly accept your marriage proposal. Your daughter Maria and my son Musin will be joined in holy matrimony. May Allah bless their union. Sheikh Hisham of Aragazira al Hadra. All right. And no sooner have I sent off my daughter to become one with her husband than I get a summons from what I would consider to now be family to the implacable Guthrie. I call on you to honor our alliance and join me in the Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera, excuse me, Al Hadra border raid of Labla. Labla. That's a fun word, Labla. We will indeed join. We are consecrating this union by quickly having yet another war and yet another martial perk on top of it i could become an overseer martial stewardship and control growth absolutely we are still wrestling with controlled growth everywhere so that makes sense for me i have my 1200 men at arms which is going well, actually they're not all men at arms per se they are levies amongst other things and now we need to go help our allies. While on the road during the war, my third daughter, I sometimes forget how closely they are in age, the tuition, the two, tu yeah, tuition of Ermacinda is at an end, with sufficient tutelage, even a child displayed little natural inclination towards warfare. She's gro shown great aptitude, both in battle tactics and the management of armies. The same, she will never command them. Duchess Antha's contributions cannot go unmentioned. Her guidance has helped the child reach further than I ever could have. She has gained a skilled tactician and an aggressive attacker. Again, it's unfortunate that she won't be able to use them, but perhaps there is a culture that would allow them to use them in battle. And with that, we do also need to find a, a loving husband for her as well. And I believe I found just the man, Pancratios Callistos. This beast of a laddie while eight years older than my daughter is definitely going to join my armies he is robust which gives him prowess and a health boost he is an aggressive attacker he is a hunter he is a misguided warrior 
None of those that I can hold against him per se, but it does mean that his prowess is rather impressive. Matrilineal a relationship means that he will join my house and he will become one of my knights. I'm quite satisfied with this, assuming, of course, that it will go to plan. Gladly accept your marriage proposal. Absolutely. Welcome to the family. Pancratios Callistos. First thing I shall do, add you as a knight. Mayor Reynard, absolutely come in here. It's been a while since I've taken a look at all of these boyos. My courtier, Musin, absolutely. That is my other son-in-law. My vassal, Lord Mayor Nuno of Cardana. We're going to forbid him from coming in simply because he holds a court position. Absolutely. There we go. Fantastic. Well, in an effort to try and sneak around the invading army who was across the river, invading my uh, now whatever he's called, my in-laws as it were, I got caught in the Battle of Asna Kalar. We are extremely outnumbered in every manner and fashion outside of simply commander traits. We have more or less troops. We have less knights. We have less variations of troops as well. This is not going to go well. I don't believe my allies are actually going to be able to support me even if they wanted to. Battle's not going to end well. I was correct. Unshockingly. And now they don't have enough people to support that siege. But I do believe they are actually going to get caught. Well, this was something that uh, didn't really concern any of you. While the effort was appreciated, I don't believe that we can win this war. I'm not going to keep throwing my troops across half of the Iberian Peninsula simply to try and appease my in-laws. We attempted to. They did not aid us, so we are no longer going to aid them. We will disband the armies. We will recoup. Perhaps we will look into some men at arms. Pikemen, I believe, are going to be one of the best scenarios. Hills mountains and desert mountains will ensure that we can thrive in a majority of the landscape of the iberian peninsula being able to have 200 pikes and then 200 light horsemen should give me a decent advantage in battle but also the recruitment of said pikemen will be the end of this chapter in our life while the war will continue on it is not something we will gain an active uh, participation in however we are still growing stronger i have spent years trying to get over yusuf and while it does still hurt while the pain is still there there are so many other things to be thankful for like my two daughters my three daughters are all now married they are on their own they're out and about creating their own lives and furthering our dynasty one small child person in position at a time my realm is thriving we are currently engaged in several construction projects across the board and have developed our counties quite successfully I'm starting to feel like a true duke but i'm also starting to feel my age maybe i need to pick things up with my son maybe i do Ladies and gentlemen of the Council of the Court and of my realm, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know how to do it. Give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, turn on bell notifications, leave a comment. And if you want to financially support the channel, never required, but always appreciated, you can do so via a YouTube membership or by checking out Havoc's Dog of War Outpost where you can purchase games and I get a commission. Thank you guys so very much for hanging out with me. This is Havoc. And we will continue Duke Giffrey's journey in the next episode. Iberia, ravaged by the bloody tides of four, kings and sultans, dukes and emirs. Adversity makes for strange bedfellows, my friend. And you must treat carefully if you are to decide the fate of Iberia.